Hey, so in this video, we're going to be uh, deriving Maxwell's third equation, which is an equation that describes the curl of the electric field. And as the name suggests, the curl is a number that tells us about how the electric field curls through space, how, um, uh, how its curvature uh, relates to the point you're looking at and um, what influences this curvature, at least in our universe. So before we derive Maxwell's third equation, it's worth looking into something a physicist named Faraday observed um, a few centuries ago, which was um, electromagnetic induction. He noticed that, that if you placed a conductor in a changing magnetic field, so say a wire next to the north pole of a magnet, um, and you wiggled around the wire or the magnet, the the conductor would experience a current flowing through it and now uh, Faraday sat down and thought well if there's a current there must be some sort of electric field producing the current pushing the charges and there must be some sort of source of EMF which we'll call epsilon. Um, Faraday noticed that this EMF was proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux experienced by the conductor. Uh, we now know that today as Faraday's law which says the electric field induced is the negative rate of change of the magnetic flux. Um, this, this negative sign over here comes in from uh, Lenz's law, uh, which basically says the induced EMF is in a direction such that the magnetic field produced by this induced EMF opposes this magnetic flux change that causes it. And um, if you remember from how we defined flux, we can rewrite this as the time derivative, so, i.e. the rate of change of the magnetic flux, which is our field uh, dot producted with every tiny piece of area in 3D space. It's a double in integral, uh, meaning we're integrating over an area. It could be a square, it could be a cylinder, it could be a sphere, it could be any surface. It doesn't have to be closed or open. So now we know what the um, what this induced EMF depends on. Let's just take a step back and have a look at EMF in general. So we know that in any circuit, so say we have a power supply, a cell with a resistor, um, we know that the EMF in that circuit is equal to the negative potential difference. Um, so that's basically Kirchhoff's second law. And uh, this just tells us that the energy our cell puts into each unit of charge here is equal um, to the energy lost by the charge as it flows through a circuit component, such as a resistor. Um, we can rewrite this EMF epsilon as um, an integral, in fact, because if you think about it, it's the work done by the power source, which is the force exerted. So the force exerted per unit charge is just the electric field um, dotted with the displacement. So let's say the, the tiny bit in the circuit uh, DL, so that's DL. Um, and that's just a tiny bit of the EMF. So the entire EMF is what we get if we integrate over the circuit. The circuit is a closed loop because only then current flows. So we have this closed loop integral. So that's another way of expressing EMF. The energy given to each unit charge is the work done per unit charge. And that is still um, equal to the negative voltage. But now we have two um, definitions, well, well, two mathematical ways of looking at EMF. EMF can be thought of as this integral, or it can be thought of as this derivative. So let's, let's equate them together. So by equating them, we see that the loop integral of E dl dot dotted with dl is equal to the negative rate of change of this double integral um, of B dotted with ds. So now we've come to this familiar scenario, uh, if you've watched any of the previous Maxwell videos, uh, where we have a single integral on one side of the equation and a double integral on the other side of the equation. And um, we can make the maths a bit neater 
by converting this uh, single integral on the left into a double integral using Stokes' theorem, because we know that a loop integral of a vector field is equal to the surface integral of the curl of that vector field, in this case the electric field, um, with the um, ds being the unit area. And that's equal to, um, we can do some some hand wavy maths here and push the derivative into the integral. Um, and this becomes the double integral of the negative rate of change of b dt. And again dotted with ds. And this is meant to be a dot product too because we're dotting a vector with another vector. So now we have these two integrals. If you think about it, both of these integrals are describing the same area because this over here is the area uh, enclosed by our circuit, the loop we were integrating over. And we were looking at the flux change through the area of the circuit itself. So both of these integrals were referring to this particular area. So I might just cut, use a different color for that. So this area here, um, the area enclosed in the circuit. So because we know um, they're referring to the same area and we haven't set any other restrictions, we can equ equate the integrands. And from that, we get Maxwell's uh, third equation. The curl of the electric field is equal to the negative rate of change of the magnetic field. And this is really interesting because it tells us that whenever we have a magnetic field changing with time, um, this induces an electric field around it, such that the curl, so how much it sort of spirals or uh, spins around a point, of that electric field is in the opposite direction to the rate of change of our magnetic field. So this relates how a changing magnetic field sort of induces an electric field circulating around it. Um, and it's all there in the maths. The curl operator talks about the circulation. This is the electric field itself. The negative sign over here refers to how it's in the opposite direction to this vector here. And all of Faraday's law gets encapsulated into this one line of vector calculus.